do we pull down stronghold? First of all, still talking about strongholds, you know, we mentioned that strongholds were walls, and the reality of those walls are equal to lies. So, walls, strongholds equal what? Walls, and those walls equal what? Lies. So, the edifice and the infrastructure, the security that Satan builds around his activities are a heap of lies. A heap of lies. So you could tell the other guys that went with Joshua and Caleb to spy the land. There were many things that they came up with which were lies. They say the land swallowed is inhabited. And they believed it. Lie. So if you are going to confront strongholds, you are going to beam into the situation the truth of God. Listen to me. I need to tell you what a lie is. Hmm? As far as your thoughts are concerned, anything that is not in line with the word of God is a lie. And Satan is going to build with it. It can be the reality of your circumstances. Your circumstances are different from your destiny. Are you with me? It is only what God has said that is true. So if you are going to confront a stronghold, you will begin by seeking out the truth. So if you see a Christian that is lazy, he doesn't want to study the Bible, doesn't want to know the mind of God, such a Christian cannot get by the way God wants him to get by. He's going to be defective. There's going to be a barricade that he or she cannot explain that constitutes his resistance. And that barricade is in form of stronghold. Now, if you come to a city like uh, London, you come to a city like London, and you see how it is the systems work, the transport systems are effective, the Uber system is effective, the taxi system is effective, uh, people are just moving around, everything is working, There's the electricity is in place, restaurants are everywhere. Every, it, it, when you, you come to a city like that, right, and you are full, fully persuaded that God has spoken to you that you are an apostle that is sent to such a city. Hmm? In order for you to penetrate that city, you need to be in a good frame of mind. And you must have been inoculated with a lot of truth such that the existing resistances that stare you in the face, you call them. You know, some time ago, I began to teach you about a sent mentality. The thing that Jesus did to his disciples, that they were able to carry a global vision. They left his training places with a sent mentality. That's the kind of mentality that agents of darkness have when they send them from their pavilion to come and wreak havoc among humanity. They come with a sent mentality. If a witch is sent to you, brother, he will gain employment, that witch will gain employment where you are working for proximity sake in order for the possibility of carrying out the assignment to find expression when 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 that which moves with a sent mentality the things you might call obstacles will become stepping stones that's the same kind of thing that happens to a man that is infused with truth he can no longer see obstacles he can see you need to walk on the streets of Johannesburg and after walking on the streets of Johannesburg ask yourself how do we start ministry in this town it's like a prison oh but when we got there we didn't see that prison we held a meeting a, a meeting for three days and after three days our branch in south africa has started till today three days three days was enough and we have a thriving branch in south africa no, to, to the glory of god not because i'm i'm so smart no but you see you see if you if you are not operating by the walls you will gain knowledge when people come to me to explain the their challenges i just say jesus christ this one is bound and i've seen people with broad chest that gym that are bound i've seen people uh, do you understand very beautiful dancers that got bound One came, he, he traced his grandfather. He said this was the weakness. He traced the father. He said this is weakness. He traced his... his see, see? 
bound. Satan has taught him a doctrine and he used the neology to teach it. A tower. If we take out those towers and take out those walls, you will see that possibility is the only option that exists. If God has spoken, it will come to pass. It doesn't matter what they come up. You see, if we remove the walls, remove the towers, you will discover that faith is easy. Faith, believing God is easy. Standing with God is easy. Aligning with God is easy. Doing exploits is easy. But what the challenge is, is not even the demons that operate around, it's the strongholds that are built in the minds of men. So the first thing that you need to do against the system of strongholds is that you must find the truth. The only thing that can expose those lies are the truth that are hidden in the word of God. Do you labor in the truth? Do you study your Bible? Do you hear what God says you are? Do you understand the implication of being a new creation? That is the truth. And you must adopt that as your reality. And anything that is contrary to the truth is a lie. No matter how much evidences those things bring, there are lies. When Satan sees that you have locked your heart to even visible evidence and you are inclined to believe in God, he knows he has lost the battle. For instance, the pastor that was speaking um, in the voice note, all right, so the thing came, that's when we started speaking. And I said, no, this, this is how Satan operates, this is how Satan operates, this is what you need to do, and you keep doing it. And the guy got that victory even before we met physically. I know Satan hates me with passion because many of his captives have been set free cheaply. Oh, and they, oh my, are you there? Are you there? Are you there? Now, see, the, the, the reason why we are doing this is because you've been around this mountain for too long. It is time for you to step out. It's time for you to move on in the name of Jesus. So the first thing you need to do is to shine the light. Shine the light. I remember I was studying, you know, I was born very sickly and all of that. And then I was studying the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, when the Bible says that uh, who has believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground, and there is no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire. Right? The Bible called him a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our face. Surely he has borne our grief and carried our souls. Yet we did esteem him strict, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression, he was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his Try Kaboga. That was where the bullet, the, the bullet shot my heart. We is right. We are it. and as I read that scripture, something happened in, in about two, three seconds, and I was able to see in the spirit, and the reality of my healing touched my heart. That became truth. The moment that happened, the healing did not take place instantly, but nothing could wrestle away. That truth that I had seen from my heart, faith was born. And in one week, I was better. In two weeks, I was even much more better. Three weeks, I was much, much, much better. Four weeks, I was bubbling. And that's how I walked out of sickness till this day. So what we are saying here is that truth is a reality. Truth is a testimony of a personality. Truth is the living word of God. And when you have an encounter with truth, any other thing that produces evidences are lies. And the same way Satan built the walls by putting block after block, you are going to dismantle the walls block after block after block. Sometimes thoughts will flood your mind, then you rebel against it and you speak to it. And then another block goes.
and then another block goes and then seven blocks go 14 blocks go 21 blocks go and it will become a dwarf fence by the time it's a dwarf fence it can't even stop you again so satan will because he's short of my arterias will come and remove the other blocks by himself and go and build somewhere else <laughs> oh my god oh my god hallelujah and guess what the moment the walls are gone and you see through the vista of truth the exaggerated towers will crumble by themselves the microscope that you were using to magnify it will fall off your eyes the scales will fall off and suddenly you will see the treachery you will see the exaggeration and then you will see that there are microscopic organisms that can be ignored and the moment you have seen that the captivity that you were in in the prison house you come out of the prison of your own accord so you get the gist it begins with what truth and then satan sometimes can be forceful the way the uh, pastor described his experience be imposing the thoughts using demonic spirits and then when you are imposed upon like that you speak back tell him no you are wrong i am the righteousness of god in christ Jesus. the best you are mistaken you were not in court because in court i was justified and god who is the judge of all declared me discharged and acquitted it's just that you didn't come to court so you are still operating from an old perspective the current situation is that I was discharged and I could sometimes you need to preach to Satan. So, you know, you know, it's obvious we were not in court and he doesn't like preaching. I preached to him many times. He will show up. Somebody did me so much wrong and I was bitter. And the Holy Spirit whispered to me, the way to escape this bitterness now, he begin to say, I love that person. Make sure his name. I love him. 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 Then my heart began to, to love him. And then Satan left. Satan left. He said, no, we can't plant this seed of bitterness here because it will not grow. The guy is into, is into weeding, consistent weeding. Those are your brothers that you hate. I say, if I see him, if I see him, I go do something. I go, you see, wake up from this meeting. Go, keep saying it for 14 days. I love Jane. I love you. I love you. You see, you are speaking from truth. Because the Holy Ghost that is inside of you, the Bible says it's him that sheds abroad our hearts love so keep saying i love very soon the root of bitterness will be strong it will dry up it will wither and the exaggerated tower will fall of its own accord just like the twin towers of 9 11 it will drop down and then you begin to think in a sober way you begin to think in your right mind it, it will be possible for you to begin to think the thoughts of god every bondage that you have carried for 12 years for 15 years for 35 years that bondage that has kept you on the same spot you are walking free to 